Hello there, and welcome or welcome back to Sweet Interviews 101, the series where I teach you how to get your dream software engineering job. If you don't know me, my name is Maria, and I have a lot of, for some reason, interview videos on this channel. Last week, we covered all of my tips and tricks for how to prepare for coding interviews, and this week we're going to talk about what to do in the actual interview and how to ace your coding interviews. The most important thing you need to know about coding interviews is that they are a performance. It's like watching someone perform a dance at a recital. The people that look natural and comfortable in the choreography are the ones who have practiced a lot to make it look like that. So that's what I want you to understand. Coding interviews aren't just technical skills, it's also about your soft skills. Nobody wants to watch someone or work with someone who is a robotic person and can just spit out the correct answers or the correct dance moves. They want to work with someone who communicates well and basically someone they want to work with on a team. So those are the types of skills that I'm also going to be talking about in this video. Classic YouTuber segue. All right, let's get right into the video. So the first thing you should know is what is going to be the format of your coding interview. Some recruiters might send you an email listing out what's going to happen, but from my experience doing so many interviews, this is essentially the format that it's going to go. So if you have a 45 minute or 60 minute coding interview or multiple of them booked in one day, most of the interviews are going to be in this format. So the first two to three minutes are going to be introductions. Your interviewer or interviewers will just describe what team they're on and then they'll ask you to introduce yourself. So I usually just explain that I'm a student in York University and I'm in the Shopify dev degree program. I explain what my past internships were and maybe I'll explain a little bit further in detail if one of them specifically pertains to the team that the person is on or something like that. So after introductions are over, then you may go through one to two different paths. So it's kind of like a decision tree structure. So they'll either spend 10 minutes quizzing you and asking you questions about your resume and any experiences that you listed or projects that you have, or they will go straight into one or two coding or technical questions. Most likely the way that this will work is that they'll send you a link to an online code editor, hopefully not a Google Doc, and it will probably either be HackerRank, Codility, or CoderPad. So I'll try to familiarize myself with those environments. They're all basically the same, but some of them have like also online whiteboarding features. So that's pretty useful. And at the end, hopefully your interviewer will leave you a few minutes to ask them questions about their job and their experience with the company. So now I'm going to go into more detail about all of those three parts of a coding interview and how to ace them. So let's say that your interviewer decided to take the first path where they decide to ask you a bunch of questions about what you wrote on your resume. How do you answer those types of questions? Well, first of all, I would say always use the word I instead of we because they're interviewing you, not your entire team at your previous company or your entire group in a group project. They're asking you what you specifically did. So make sure that you have some answers prepared for random different scenarios that they can ask you, especially about things that you listed on your resume. And just because you say I a lot doesn't mean you should act all arrogant, okay? No one wants to work with someone who is very show off -y, right? And I'd also say to limit the details of your explanations because your interviewer is probably lacking context. So I'll start by explaining the main points and then explaining more in detail if they ask you further questions. And how do you answer those types of questions? Using the classic star method, of course. You've probably seen this, but I think it's a good way to remember how to answer questions properly in a concise way, where there's like a beginning, middle, and end to your story, instead of going off for five minutes talking about something and making zero sense, which is what I sometimes end up doing because I forget to do this. Just remember to list out the situation, task, action, and result of whatever they ask you. And definitely spend the most time on the action because that's where you're going to be using the I keyword and explaining what you actually did in that situation. All right, now going into the main idea, answering coding questions. Another acronym that I really like to use that I credit my friend Alexa for showing me is ABCD, which is also super easy to remember because it's just four different steps. So the first step is ask which means that you're going to try to 
understand the problem and ask all of your clarifying questions. This is the most important step, okay? I see so many smart people, including a lot of my friends, miss this step completely. They will read part of the question and then just start coding immediately. You're answering the wrong question most likely if you do that. And I've seen that so often. And if you do that in an interview, then that's just gonna show that you're not a good software engineer because good software engineers try to figure out all the requirements before they start doing anything. So that just shows how inexperienced you are as a developer. So I want you to make sure that this is the first step that you always do. It is ingrained into you to ask questions. I know it might be hard at first to come up with them, but I'm going to list out the main ones that you should know by heart to ask. Make sure you do these because you might end up answering a completely different question if you don't. The types of questions I would ask in an interview would be what data am I provided? So the type and the format, what data am I expected to output? Do I need to transform my data before computing things? And most importantly, does this problem remind me of other problems I have seen before? Try to draw inspiration from coding patterns such as sliding window or breadth first search and things like that. So how can you break down this problem into smaller ones and ones that you have seen before? I would also say that you should always ask your interviewer what they want you to optimize for. Is it time complexity or is it space complexity or both? Do they have a specific requirement that this thing has to run in O one time or O of N? So make sure you know about that before going into the next step. And throughout this entire process, make sure that you're asking your interviewer questions and not just hints, okay? The second step is to brainstorm, which is where you're going to think aloud and try to plan out your solution. So at this point, you still haven't started coding yet, but you might use the online code editor to write down any answers to questions, of course, but just make sure that they're like, as comments and not as code. So in this step, I would say my tips are to reread the question. So make sure that you read the question at least two times so that you fully understand what it's asking you to do. Then if the interviewer provided any examples, go through those examples and see if those make sense with your understanding of the question and ask clarifying questions if need be. What you can also do in this step is to make diagrams and draw things out like a lot of these code editors have whiteboard features. And the most important thing in this section is to brainstorm different solutions, right? So with each of those solutions that you come up with, explain why you thought of that solution. Like why are you going to use this data structure or this algorithm and what their trade-offs are between time and space complexity. Another really important point is to always mention the brute force solution. So anything that's O of N squared or greater like whatever you can come up with first, that's a, probably a terrible solution, still mention it just so that your interviewer can probably just check off that box in their rubric because it shows that you're thinking about all the different types of solutions and not just jumping to the most optimized one, which you probably would only be able to do if you have already seen this question before. And then once you have considered everything, then narrow down on one solution. Then we can move into the third step, which is complete. And that's where you're actually going to implement your solution. This step should actually be the easiest one. Why? Because you've already asked all the questions that you needed to ask and you brainstormed how to solve the question. Now all you need to do is just code it out. And if you know the syntax in your language, then it should be easy peasy. So that's why I'd say know the syntax of your language. Like I said in my interview prep video, you have to know your programming language very well so that you can seem natural when you're coding the solution. So my tips for this step are to always be talking. Make sure that your interviewer knows everything you're doing, like one step at a time. You can even explain like before you start coding something, say, this is what I'm going to do and then do it. Or while you're typing things out, explain what you're doing so that they can follow along. And another tip is in this case, use the word we, because you want to treat your interviewer like a collaborator. Like this is more of a pair programming exercise rather than a coding interview. Also make sure that you use consistent coding standards for your language and that you use descriptive names for your functions and variables. If you ever do need to search something up like a package or something or a function in a library that you just can't remember the name of, then do make sure to ask your interviewer if you're allowed to do that. A lot of interviewers will let me look at the Python docs if I forgot something. Just make sure that you ask before doing that. And if you make a mistake somewhere, or you kind of stumble over something, 
then go through and trace your code and try to find the mistake yourself because you don't want your interviewer interrupting you and saying, oh, I found a mistake somewhere and then you have to go and search for it yourself. So try to be very careful when you're coding. And the extra cherry on top in this step is if you mention the time and space complexity of your algorithm without being asked to do that because you'll probably be asked, but doing it yourself just shows how comfortable you are with interviewing. And now the final step of this process is develop. That's where you test your solution. So I would take the example test cases that they gave me in the question and also make up a few of my own to test maybe like edge cases or things that it might error on. And I would run those and print things out in the output and do that on my own without being prompted to do so. So it shows that you have this ingrained in you to test your code. And if you find any bugs, then don't be discouraged read the stack trace and try to find which line it's erroring on and try to fix that. Being able to fix that in an interview is also a very good skill and it shows that you know how to read errors and fix them. So the thing with the ABCD method is that you have to make sure that you're working the clock, that you know how long each step should take. Like I said before, the first step, A for ask, is the most important and you should not rush into coding just because you're nervous. A lot of the times I have done poorly in interviews because I skipped that step and I went right into coding and typing up a solution without thinking beforehand. So that's why I would recommend spending five minutes before writing any code to ask your questions and to brainstorm. Then I'd recommend spending 10 minutes to actually write out the code and approximately two to three minutes to test your solution. Why do I say those times? Because you probably will have two different questions that you have to solve within that amount of time that they give you, which is not a lot of time. But if you do spend more time, like five minutes on the A and the B portion, then the coding can even take less than 10 minutes because you already have a game plan. And you can always ask your interviewer at the beginning how many questions that they are going to ask you so that you can plan out this timing and make sure that you're properly working the clock. And finally, step number three in a coding interview process is that you get to ask the interviewer questions. This is a really useful time to ask anything that you're interested in about the company. And the questions you ask really depend on who you are and how much you already know about the company or about the team that that person's on. Our good old friend cracking the coding interview had a few suggestions that I like to share, which are that there are three different types of questions. So the first one is genuine. So you can ask them, what brought you to this company? and what has been most challenging for you. The second is insightful questions. For example, I noticed that you use technology X. How do you handle problem Y? And the third is passion. I'm very interested in scalability and I'd love to learn more about it. What opportunities are there at this company to learn about this? And here's a list of some questions that I personally like to ask in my interviews. And make sure that you're not asking your interviewer about things like perks or benefits because those are questions that you should be discussing with your recruiter and not another software engineer. So overall, interviewing is a performance and you need to practice to get good at that. A lot of people quote that the best way to get good at interviewing is by interviewing. And I think that that's very true. If you have interviews lined up, then I'd say rank them in priority of where you want to work. So the lower priority ones, like the companies that you wouldn't want to work at, I would interview for them first as practice kind of. And then if possible, the companies that you really, really want to work at, you would schedule those interviews later. Or you can also do mock interviews with friends. I think that that's like the best way to practice because you can go on one of those coding editors and pretend to be the interviewer for your friend or they can interview you and go back and forth. And there's also the website, like I mentioned in my previous video called Pramp, where you can practice with random strangers. And personally, I didn't practice with my friends, but I was in this program called the Facebook ABCS program back in the fall of 2020, which is where they would group you with other students and you would have to do mock interviews every single week. I was grouped with so many smart students, so I had to get better because they were so much better than me. So I think that going through a program like that is super useful if you get the opportunity to do that but doing mock interviews with random people or your friends is just as valuable. And because I was in that program, they gave us a lot of good resources. So I made a copy 
of the checklist that they list for all of the soft skills that you should look for when someone is interviewing you or you're interviewing someone else. So you can make a copy of it. I'll link the Google Doc below. So make a copy of that and then you can use that in your mock interviews to practice with your friends and make sure that you're doing everything in the ABCD method. And yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then remember to like the video and subscribe to stay tuned for next week's video. And I will see you next time. Bye.